number of ways that they actually could have uh, uh, improved it. Say, tie uh, life story into the way that you construct your characters or experience. It would be a very simple kind of change. But we can go a lot deeper than just looking at default stats and say, let's look at the underground, uh, at the under underlying uh, uh, identity elements that are broken down into data structures. So this is from a game called Neverwinter Nights. And so if you look under the hood, actually, you have uh, data structures for uh, race, you know, even blood color by race, something almost like the one drop uh, rule, right? And so uh, changing race in this game actually doesn't change the appearance of your character, but many items have racially based uh, bonuses. Gender is interesting if you look underneath the, the hood because when you play, you just see the character, but in the data structure, there are actually five different genders. You might think that it's somewhat more expansive uh, than, say, a binary gender representation. Anyway, if you happen to be male, both, other, or none, which are four of the gender representations, you have a default male body type. So in fact, you still, have, despite these five different body types, under the hood, you have, uh, you have just two uh, binary uh, uh, genders within it. You know, so the point of all this is that these elements are built into the very data structure of the game. So just taking up a character in a virtual world and saying, I'm going to look like somebody different than I am, it doesn't do that much, you know, actually, in order to think about ourselves through different lenses or think about ourselves as uh, new identities or, or to, to empower ourselves. In fact, uh, a certain type of oppression or discrimination is built into the underlying structure of, of the code. So it means that it behooves us to build new technologies or think about becoming creators or doers or learners and builders of, of uh, technology. And social networking, there are problems too. So I mean, for example, uh, uh, it, this is an old Facebook page, but opting in or opting out to an identity is just, say, joining a group. And so you see uh, the Facebook, <laughs> yes, you want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> Native American, <laughs> opt into the Native American group with its uh, you know, stereotypical, you know, uh, you know, the, the so-called noble savage uh, 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 metaphors here. It's quite a simplistic model of group membership. And so I won't go through all of these, but there are a number of different problems that we have, whether it's computer games, social networking, virtual worlds, any of our online accounts, any of these digital representations. And that's the fact that our identities are reduced to statistics, social categories are reduced to just graphical models and skin, so just nothing but appearance. Uh, character change isn't driven by anything like emotion or actually uh, meeting people or what you do, but rather combat, spatial exploration, and acquiring objects. Right? In social networking, like we have simplistic models of joining community. It's just click a button and you're a member of the community. You don't actually have to live, work, or breathe with the community. Uh, virtual worlds, we have... Uh, uh, so what about states like transitioning or becoming? So I was actually on a panel once with a, a transgender digital media artist. And so that was somebody who was actually in a state of transition. I said, what about becoming? Well, that's something we all deal with as you become an expert, you know, for, for example, right, from being a novice, where you're always in states of transition, but usually you're always just something fixed in digital technology, mm -hmm. yeah. limited cultural diversity, right? So there are a lot of limitations that we have in, in uh, current technologies. But you might ask, what's even the big problem just because well, it's just a game, right? It's just a virtual world. Well, there's research, uh, some, of, some of my own empirical uh, uh, research, with Jeremy Balinson at Stanford is another person that shows that changes to virtual representations like uh, impact issues like interpersonal confidence, body image, students' perception of themselves as learners and doers, right? So, I, so our real world interaction with people can be changed significantly by the way we interact through our virtual identities. And if you even have an account for your cell phone, right, you have a virtual identity you know, in some kind, some kind of ways. So it's not just these uh, uh, pyrotechnic examples in, in the video games I mentioned. So addressing these problems, I think, will make uh, uh, more diverse user groups, uh, uh, you know, provide better customizability, better customizability, make for more salient and powerful experiences, invent new forms of art, entertainment, and identity. So in short, right, we can do a lot better than the current state. Mm -hmm. So you can say that we've at least been trying to take some modest steps towards doing so in imagination, computation, and expression. And so with the support of the National Science Foundation, I initiated a five-year project that's called the Advanced Identity Representation Project. So that's developing a toolkit that uh, works across platforms, social networking, avatars, profiles, characters, that enables rich self-expression, that can change dynamically, address issues like social stigma, bias, prejudice. 
and is based on cognitive science models of how we categorize in the world. So instead of just the naive intuition of a game designer who might not know anything about the experience of diverse groups of people, we're looking at how we actually cognitively categorize in the world. And it's much different than people assume. We don't actually just have categories. We just try to force people into small boxes. What people tend to do is to have a, a prototype, the models of family resemblances. It's very much more flexible than the way that, that people imagine in, in, in most of these infrastructures. And we can learn a lot, you know, even going back to 1903 from, say, W.E.D. Du Bois and double consciousness. Right? So, as I mentioned before, the kind of rich ways that we navigate the world uh, uh, give us a lot of power and insight in that, into how we can develop more, more uh, powerful technologies. So the dual awareness of people from marginalized groups of their uh, self-conception and the social stigma that tends to be attributed to the group. Right? Everyday self-presentation, so the fact that we adapt and perform identities like gesture and, and uh, discourse, uh, and register for different social situations. And even recently in 99, identity tours. So that's a psychologically painful experience of a person's self-conception uh, differing from broad and stigmatizing uh, perceptions reinforced by classification infrastructures. So what I mean is just essentially that it's just the same thing that Du Bois said back in the day, but just the fact that these infrastructures we have, like the game we have for constructing our characters or online accounts, uh, actually result in psychologically painful experiences when you have some disjunction between who you are in the real world and then the way that you have to represent yourself through those technologies. Do I get any trouble with that? Right. Just, just explain it one more right, Yes, sure. So yeah, it's, it's essentially what Du Bois was talking about, but it's, you know, the idea of torque is the idea of twisting. It's a twisting of our biographies, of our life stories, against the technologies that we have to mm -hmm. engage. Right? So when you have to go and, and use it, so it's that sense I had, say, creating a character in Skyrim, and, oh, that looks like me now, but I have to be a little bit less intelligent if I want to look like me, so maybe I should look... Uh, like the French character, the Roman character. Right? So you know, it's my biography being twisted up against that uh, kind of infrastructure. And the same thing when you create an online profile on Facebook and you have to say, uh, uh, to kowtow to commercial interests, for, for, for example, or you have to represent yourself in a group just by opting into the group. Right? So it's that sense that you have a much richer uh, self and story. And when you go to use these technologies, then there's a kind of psychologically painful uh, experience that's detrimental to your health and happiness. Um, yes. So, one of the sort of things that our toolkit can allow are, say, changing users' self representation for different social groups. Well, you know, basic things that people have had to you know, do uh, code switching, right? So, you have different, different experiences. So, again, the things that we, have, what we can do in the real world can give us a lot of insights for uh, new technologies. For better or for worse, right? So is stereotyping or passing. Are people you know, passing on Facebook? That doesn't just mean racial passing, but you know, say, what if uh, we're, uh, I think Kenny and I were talking about, uh, just earlier about let's say, uh, a movement towards, say, punk rock music or skateboarding within the black community. What if people just want to seem a bit more like they're in that scene than they actually are, right? It's a kind, kind of passing uh, there. So can we identify this kind of passing that we have within social networking? What about swapping between multiple identities, the way that we use different identities in different situations? Mm -hmm. What about aspirational identities? You know, it's not just a fictitious identity or something negative like passing, but what about what you see yourself as in the future? Can we model our aspirational yeah. identities? And one of the things that I've noticed is that in social networking or computer games, at some level, there's similar, uh, there's, a, there's some similar, at some level of abstraction, there's some similarity between the way we represent ourselves in these different technologies. And so I did here was just draw a graph that shows a Facebook profile and a character in a game called Dragon Age. And so in uh, Facebook, you have your profile, you have these links like friends with and your groups of friends, and you have uh, different pages, different things that you like there. And then Dragon Age, you have different skills like uh, and uh, classes like you might be a rogue or. Uh, you might use a dagger, right? So there's some level you, at which you can abstract and start to compare these identities to one another, or process them in the same way. You can start to say, is this identity like another identity? And so that's where you can start to use computing to, to think about these kind of issues like Du Bois and, and others have thought about. Mm 